And it's a conversation that can make families cringe, but talking about sex can encourage safety and build confidence in children as they grow. Lauren Rogers is a certified holistic sexuality educator, and she's the owner of Sex Ed for You. And Lauren, we're happy to have you back. And clearly, this is a topic you are very comfortable with, but for so many, it's one that makes us uneasy. So where do we even start this conversation? Right. So we start by normalizing mm -hmm. that our culture does not celebrate these conversations all the time. So give yourself some compassion and some grace to start out with. And then understand that usually the reason these conversations feel uncomfortable is that you feel ill-equipped. Mm -hmm. So start with resources like the ones we're going to talk about today to start to equip yourself so that you feel a little more empowered going Absolutely. into these conversations. I like that because it's all about feeling empowered for yes. yourself, for your child, to make good decisions for you and your body that make you feel good as well. So I want to talk off with something, uh, start off with something. You have this phrase of the best way to stimulate knowledge about sexuality is by stretching their understanding of the world and children. So what do you mean by that? And how can we really use that to start this conversation? You know, one of my favorite phrases is that children learn at the outside of understanding. And anyone who has been a child or has raised a child remembers that time when all of a sudden our child grasped onto something. We thought, oh my goodness, we don't have that next resource, that next toy. So many parents remember their child go from scooting to crawling and then all of a sudden you feel like they're walking and toddling and it took you by surprise. Mm -hmm. I want to remind all parents that that's normal. Children learn at the outside of understanding. So what I love to encourage parents to do is to be having consistent conversations so that their children can overhear these things. They're in one ear and out the other when they're not ready for mm -hmm. that piece of information but they'll pick up on it. An example of this is my young daughter, of course, grows up in a house with a sexuality educator as a mom. We talk about things all the time, but it's probably once a month that she goes, you never told me that. Interesting. And I know for a fact that I have been talking about it with mm -hmm. her because it is a developmentally normal thing to be talking about. But what that shows me is, aha, uh -huh, that was the moment that she was ready to hear that piece of information. And what is celebrated in my home is my job is only to keep relaying it, yes. keep relaying it, no big deal. And she feels comfortable to say, hey, I, I'm hearing this now and I wanna talk about it further too. Yeah. And I think that shows the maturity of when that child is ready to talk about exactly. these topics. So many parents tell me, Lauren, I'm afraid that I'm gonna bring up a subject that they're not ready to hear. Okay. And I say, I understand because as a culture, we glorify sex in the media, mm -hmm. right? I'm not talking about stuff like that. We're gonna talk about the types of things I'm suggesting. I want to encourage parents that if a child is not ready to hear it, it's gonna go in one ear and out the other. Some appropriate, can we talk about some appropriate Absolutely. age time? So birth to age four, which people are always in our front when I say that, I just want you talking about bodies. Okay. I want you to be talking about the correct name for your child's body. It is statistically proven that when children know the correct names for all of their body parts, including their genitalia, we reduce childhood sexual assault. Mm -hmm. I want to repeat, please give your children the correct names of their genitalia. Express that they are the bosses of their bodies and who and what is allowed to touch their bodies. Then four to eight, start talking about what is sex. Now, if you're uncomfortable with that subject, we'll talk about a handout I have where you can do some more work on your own before that conversation, but what is sex? Who engages in sex? Who do you, what attitudes do you want your child to feel about these things? Then eight to 12, what is puberty? Mm -hmm. Start to prepare your children. Let them know what changes are coming to their body. I can't tell you how many parents tell me, Lauren, oops, right? Like I forgot to tell my kid. Yeah. Then 12 and on, we need to be talking about consent and safety and responsibility and pleasure. All really important conversations. Absolutely. And I think it's important to know that it doesn't have to be graphic. It's something about just starting a conversation to know what your body is, what it's supposed to be doing, because this is something that's so natural, especially when it comes to puberty and stuff. These changes happen. And for some reason, that still makes people uncomfortable. It does. You know, I was having a conversation with my friend just over the weekend, and she she was saying that when her daughter comes to give her a kiss on the cheek, it, it makes her recoil. And I said, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. She said, yes. I said, I would love to suggest that you start in your home a culture of, may I give you a kiss? Yes. Because what we don't realize that our children are picking up is that her body is internalizing that when she gives somebody a kiss, that they recoil. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you don't have to, mom, dad, caregiver, always accept touch that you are not in the mood to receive. And it is okay for our children to know that mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and caregivers have body boundaries too. So our children, these are our conversations about sexuality that should be happening all the time. Give your children the language to ask for the touch that they want to give or receive, and you get to do the same. These are not all about procreative sexual activities. That is one form of sexuality expression. Mm -hmm. There is so much more that we can have fun with and develop cultures of consent inside our houses. Absolutely, and it's best practices so that when you're an adult, you don't have to recoil in your own way too. You can exactly. be feeling confident about what you're doing. Um, so let's talk about the worksheet yes. that we have. For parents who say, okay, I don't even wanna get this started, but I know it's a reality of what mm -hmm. we have to do. A reminder, it's not a sex talk, it's a conversation that continues. But tell us about this worksheet you want people to download. Yeah, so I recently, state the different things you should be talking with your kids about at different ages. So that's at the top. Then there's a list of questions that you can truly do some journaling work on your own, talk with caregivers that also work with your child about things that might get in your way, right? What did you grow up thinking about sex? What attitudes do you want to pass on? What attitudes do you not want to pass on? Those types of things. Who do you believe who should be having sex? Good questions. Mm -hmm. Then the second set of questions is what of these values that I have listed there, what are your whys? Why do you want to create a culture of conversations regarding sex and bodies and the bodies of others in your home? Because I believe that we all can be motivated when we have a why that aligns with us. Mm -hmm. Share this with, again, the caregivers in your child's life. Because reminder, I come on here and say this all the time, if we're in the lives of children, we are sexuality educators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's an important purpose for all of us as well. Clearly, Lauren, she wants to talk to you about this. If you want to make a consult or just get the conversation started in your own home or with Lauren herself, that's the information you need to know right there on your screen. And we'll have links to her website on our website as well. So Lauren, thank you for being here and hopefully giving people the tools they need. They can do it. All right. Well, we'll be right back.